Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Well, it's a pleasure to introduce Koichi Nagano from University of Tsukuba. He will talk about wall singularity of spaces with the upper curvature bound. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. So, so I would like to thank the organizers to invite me and also to give give me this opportunity. So, I'm going. So, I'm going to talk about wall singularity. Of spaces with an um, upper curvature bound. So here is my plan in this talk. So the first, so so I will explain what wall singularity means. So and the next, so I will show you a wall singularity theorem about so singularity of GCVA spaces. So the third part, so. So, oh, actually, so in order to prove wall singularity theorem, so I, we need some relaxed wall singularity condition. So uh, I will explain uh, this notion. And also uh, the fourth one, so as an application of wall singularity, so I will show you some regularity theorem of co-dimension two. So, and in the final part, so I will discuss some simple application of these talks. So uh, our spaces in my talk is GCVA spaces. Namely, so we say that at metric space X is GCVA. If for some real number kappa, uh, the space X is CVA kappa, namely locally cut kappa, the second condition here, the additional condition, but X is locally compact, separable, and locally geodesically complete. So basic examples of GCVA spaces are, uh, so for instance, every complete Riemannian N manifold with sectional curvature uniformly bounded above by kappa is GCVA. And also every CVA kappa homology and manifold is GCVA. Homology manifold means, means that so uh, separable metric space. So for each point, yeah, in X, so the local homology X and X minus X. So this is isomorphic to the Euclidean. So in particular, uh, all topological manifolds are homology manifolds. So, so in the context of the geometry of GCVA spaces, so the space of directions and the tangent spaces are also GCVA. More precisely, so yeah. So for every point x, the space of directions denoted by sigma x x is a compact, geodesically complete cat one space, so GCVA. And also the tangent space denoted by TXX, uh, defined as the Euclidean cone over the space of the direction, is a proper geodesically complete cat zero spaces. So also GCVA. Right. So Lichak and myself so study the uh, some basic uh, properties of GCVA spaces in the two papers. So. The first papers here concerns some geometric structure theorems. And the second one concerns topological regularity. So in order to explain what wall singularity means, so I have to review the works uh, with Alexander Lichak. So we need some notation. So for topological space X, we denote by SX, the set of all non-manifold points, namely topological singular set. 
So, and also, we, so we, we want to consider so some geometric singular set here. So for a GCBA space X, so a point X is M regular if the tangent space is isometric to Rm times for some i. And also, so a point X is M singular if it is not M regular. So for a subset A, we denote by Rm A, the set of all M regular points, and also Sm A, the set of all M singular points. Right. So here is a geometric structure theorem for GCBA spaces. So consider a GCBA space X, and let X M be the M dimensional part defined as defined by the set of all points X. So whose tangent cone has topological dimension is equal to M. So then um, there exists an open subset M of X satisfying the following properties from one to three. So the first one is M is a Lipschitz M manifold and open dense in XM. The second one, so the closure of XM minus M has half sort of dimension is at most a minus one. And also the M singular set in M has half sort of dimension is at most a minus two. The third one concerns the differentiable structure. So the Lipschitz manifold M admits a DC differentiable structure and um, associated, so BB local Riemannian metric G, so continuous on the M regular set on M. So in the sense of Perelman. So look at this picture. So this is a local figure in GCBA spaces. So I, I would like to explain the theorem, so, well, here, okay. So uh, this is a one dimensional part, and also here is a so two dimensional part, and this is a three dimensional part. Okay, so here, sorry. Okay, so now uh, let M be two. So now let M be two, so, MM, where is MM? So, uh, where is M2? This is uh, so the interior of such simplex. There is uh, some MM, M2. And of course, this is an open dance in X2. X2, where here, the, including the boundary points like this. So, and also the uh, uh, closure of X is also here minus m has half of dimension is at most a minus one. This is one. And also, so, so this means, so in, in m, so in, m, in m2, the two single, two single point uh, has dimension zero, which means here, like this. Okay, so, so, so the next result is a rectifiable result of a singular subset of GCBA spaces. Well, so here, yeah. okay. Let X be GCBA, then each M singular set of X is countably M minus one rectifiable. And also if dimension of X is equal to N, then the topological singular set is also countably n minus one rectifiable. Okay, so let me now uh, explain. So now let m equal three, then for instance, S3x, where is S S3x is so, uh, here is also S3x, all of them, and also the boundary of here. Of the three simplex. So these 
uh, uh, so part of the geometric structure theorems of Lichak and myself. So, so uh, for simplicity, we will discuss purely n-dimensional GCBA spaces. So we say that a separable metric space is purely n-dimensional. What? Yeah, purely n-dimensional. If for every non empty open subset U, we have so dimension U is equal to n. So uh, consider a filtration for a GCBA space by M singular set. So let X be a purely n-dimensional GCBA space. Then so we have the filtration made by SMX. So the top, top part coincides with original X by the dimensional reasons. So, so Lichak and myself, uh, so as I mentioned before, the highest strata, yeah, highest strata, still here, uh, X minus SNX, coincides with RNX, is dense in a Lipschitz and manifold. That is open dense in the whole X and satisfies uh, some nice properties. So our motivation in this talk, so, is to study the structure of the second highest strata, second highest strata uh, in X. And also to investigate what does it happen when the second highest stratum is empty. Well, these are the main topics in my talk, so, okay. So what is wall singularity? So uh, we say that a point in point X is an n wall point if x belongs to the second highest strata. Namely, uh, the tangent space is isometric to Rn minus one times Tk1 for some k at least three, where Tk1 is a Euclidean cone over the discrete space of k point space, denoted by Tk0. Okay, so if and only if the space of the direction is isometric to the spherical join of SN minus two and the K point spaces. So by the way, if K is, K would be equal to two, then T to zero means just a real line. And also if K is equal to two, then so we, we see more splitting, so, so x becomes more regular. But, uh, so we want to look at some n wall point, yeah? So, and hence, k is at least, at least three. So for a subset A, so we denote by WNA, the set of all n wall points in A. So this picture is a typical picture of the wall singularity. So let x be the, R minus one times T for one. Okay, here we can see T for one. This is a Euclidean cone over four point spaces. And also here means R N minus one. Just this figure is in the case of N is equal to two. So then the space of the election at X is so S0 here, spherical join of S0 and four point spaces, four point space, the four point space. So this is a typical figure of a wall singularity. So uh, by the way, so this set WNX is an extremal subset of X in the sense of Fujioka who gave a uh, so talk on Monday, so about extremal subsets of CBB and GCBA spaces, right? So <laughs> in order to sketch a proof of our wall singularity cell, oh, sorry. So this is a wall singularity cell. So let X be as above. So then for every N wall point in X, and for every open neighborhood here, for every point X, n wall point, and also for every open neighborhood of U of X, there exists a point 
x0. So this is arbitrarily close to x. And an open neighborhood of u0 here, like this, of x0 containing also u such that x0 belongs to the singular Lucas, topological singular Lucas, and u0 is homeomorphic to wall neighborhood. Right. By the way, so wall means so uh, the name of wall coming from the theory of Euclidean buildings. So such such a neighbor, so okay, so, such simplex is called wall. So but anyway, so this is the wall singularity theory. Well, so I have to remark that on wild example of two-dimensional GCBA spaces due to Bruce Kleiner. So for every K, at least four, there exists a purely two-dimensional GCBA space X. In fact, X, B, e, X is cat to zero. So admitting a two wall point X at which the tangent space is isometric to R times T for one. But every open neighborhood of X is not, not homeomorphic to the wall neighborhood. So, so let me now explain how to construct such world examples. So first we prepare some Euclidean domain. This is a convex, so wide domain, gray, gray domain here. First prepare such, so some wide domain. So, so the domain, if the domain, so converges to X, then the size much smaller, smaller and smaller. So then, so at X, the direction of this singular one is so just only one direction. So then the tangent space at X is isometric to R cross TK1. So, and also these are four sheets for actually, so look at these boundary curves here, upper boundary curves for upper boundary curves. So we prepare two sheet of concave Euclidean half plane. So we attach, so two sheet along a single upper boundary line. So for the lower part, lower boundary line, so we do the same procedure by using some two sheets of concave domains in Euclidean space. So then this, the space becomes cat zero. Okay, so my, so our theorem one, so the point, so X, so we have to select a point X zero, avoiding the original wall point. This is the reason why. So for instance, for given X, in the wall point X, then we have to avoid X zero. Then we can find such a point X zero. So around X zero, we found, we can find uh, some neighborhood of three sheet, the book of three sheet. Okay, uh, from here, and also this and this the upper two half planes. So this is a theorem of one. So by the way, so Takashi Shioya and Takao Yamaguchi and myself, so study uh, so more precise geometric structure of two dimensional GCBA spaces. So the next one is the smallest wall singularity theorem. So if the, N wall point X, so is smallest, which means that the tangent space is isometric to Rn minus one times T three one. The case of K is equal to three. So then, so there exists an open neighborhood U zero of X such that, so, okay, the same conclusion holds. 
So namely, so we can find the whole neighborhood of X directly. It's the smallest case, so why? So this is a so, uh, sort of, uh, so naive reason is, so any metric tree with three boundary points is homeomorphic to T31. But if K is at least four, so the uh, claim does not fold, okay? So for instance, look at here. Okay, here is a metric three with boundary four points, four boundary points. And also here is also metric three with four boundary points, but the topology is completely different and also dramatically changes continuously. So by the way, this is some naive reason why in theorem two, we can select uh, a directly an open neighborhood uh, of uh, world neighborhood of a given world point. So, Okay, in order to prove uh, wall singularity theorem, so we need some relaxed notion. So let delta be small, let delta be small. So an X is GCBA, so a point X is M delta regular. If X is M delta strained by an M delta strainer from P1 to PM in the sense of Lichak and myself. So roughly speaking, so we have, so the space of direction at X is delta cross to the spherical join, SM minus one and something. Okay, here, okay. So here is X and from P1 to PM, look like this. So this is the M delta strainer the almost, this is delta almost equal to pi over two. But so a point X is M delta regular if it is not M delta regular. So for a subset A, so we denote by RM delta A and SM delta A in a similar way as above. So oh, I want to mention the, uh, openness of relaxed geometric regular set. So for every open subset U of X, the relaxed regular set is open. So relaxed singular set is closed. Okay, this is a some kind of a basic properties, but so these properties uh, play the essential role in, in our theory. So by using this relaxed notion, we introduce a relaxed wall singularity. So this is very simple. So let delta be small, and also let X be a purely n-dimensional GCVA. So we say that a point X is an n-delta wall point if X belongs to the kind of second highest strata. So for subset A, we denote by W and delta A, so in a similar fashion, to denote the set of all n delta wall points in A. So the figure is like this. So X, if X belongs to the here, so X is n minus one delta strain because of the definition. So here from P1 to Pn minus one, uh, because this figure is in the case of n equal to two. So here, that's one point. So X is n minus one delta strain. Here, n minus one delta strain. In this figure, one delta strain. So, but in this point, so is not uh, belongs to this set because this the point here belongs to R and delta because 
from P1 to Pn minus 1, okay, this point for something y, this point is n delta strained by something, okay, oops. Here, so some, okay, here, like this. So we can find some strained point here, or one point. So, and also look like this, some regular, regular neighborhood. We can look, we can find a regular neighborhood around y. So in this figure, WN delta represents as a singular locus. So the basic properties, as basic properties of all singular sets. So for n, if delta is small enough, then for every open subset U of x, WN is contained in WN delta, and also this is contained in topological singular set. Okay, so here is a relaxed wall singularity theorem, but uh, uh, content is almost the same for the uh, so sharp wall singularity theorem mentioned before. For every n, so, and also for all sufficiently small delta, so the following poles. So let X be a purely n-dimensional GCBA, then for every n delta wall point in X, and for every open neighborhood U of X, so for every given X n delta wall point, then we can find, a, uh, so for arbitrary close to X zero, and also for some neighborhood, homeomorphic to wall neighborhood here, like this. So, and also we get some information about singularity. So the topological singular set coincides with geometric singular set completely. And also the topological singular set has N minus one household measure positive and finite. Okay. So, oh, I want to remark that the uh, smallest wall singularity theorem two can be also relaxed similarly, but I omit the detail. So let me now sketch the relaxed wall singularity theorem. So uh, sketch of a proof. So let X be arbitrary so n delta wall point, and also take an open neighborhood of x. Yeah, this x. Okay. Noise. Hey Don, can you mute yourself? Please. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So thank you very much. So, oh, let me now sketch of the proof of relaxed wall singularity theorem. So for given X and delta wall point, so let U be a song somehow. Open neighborhood of X. As a step one, so we find an open neighborhood of V of X contained in U, so such and uh, n minus one delta strainer from here. Okay, here, P1, Pn minus one here. So uh, in X minus V here, and V, this is a V. And also uh, consider the map, the so-called n minus one delta strainer map, which is uh, uh, n minus one tuple of the distance functions from Pi. So we denote by pi y the fiber of f. From here, the point, the, the n minus one tuple from p1 to pn minus one. So the fiber is, look like this, look like this. this is the fiber, okay, here is y, then fiber pi y. Consider the, uh, such, uh, so distance map and the fiber. So from the geometric studies in Lichak and myself, it follows that F is regular in the sense that one plus O N delta lip sheet and one plus O N delta open. In other words, almost symmetric. So 
The fiber has interior metric d per y by Lipschitz to the ambient metric. And also th this fiber pi y is uniformly locally geometrically contractible. So the so-called LGC something. So, and also the uh, metric, interior metric of the fibers. So continuously a to y. So if namely if yj converges to y in V, then the metric converges to here. So then at step two, so this is a figure or, or some x. So with the help of the Lichak open map theorem 2005, we can find a point x0 in Sn delta arbitrarily crossed x and an open ball of ur x0 and an integer k0 at least three here, x0 and also look like this neighborhood. Okay, this is a so, so neighborhood. So the, list, the restriction of the distance map M delta n minus one delta strainer map of F to SN delta here is by Lipschitz embedding into RN minus one. So we can show that. So, and also for every Y zero, okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. So, yeah. For every Y zero in SN delta, the slice of the fiber here, you get here, is a metric tree homeomorphic to TK01 with vertex Y0 here, only vertex Y0 here. So, so the set YR, YRX0 defines as a bundle, just a union of the slice of the fibers is open in X. We can prove all of them. So, and then we define a map large five from yr x zero here, the figure of yr x zero. So uh, to the world neighborhood r n minus one times t k zero one by, so this forty so five y is so a pair of the f y. This is sit in r n minus one. And here is distance on the fiber from y to y zero. Okay, so oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, here is y. So okay, f y is so some distance map, and here is from y zero. This the second component is the distance between from y0 to y, between y0 and y. Okay, we can prove that such map, uh, this map phi is an open embedding. So this is a sketch of the Lux Walsh theorem. So the next, so I will discuss some regularity theorem of co-dimension two singularity. So, uh, so, but as a proposition, if a purely n-dimensional GCBA space X is a homology n-manifold, then the n-wall set WNX is empty because of homological reasons. So, this is a so typical example of non-homology manifold without wall singularity. So let and be at least two. So just X is uh, so, so we, pre we prepare two Rn and also so in Rn consider the co-dimension two subspace. So glued together. So by the Lechetoniak gluing theorem, the resulting space becomes cat zero. So this space has no wall singularity. 
and also the topological dimension is equal to n minus one, n minus two, just so co-dimension two, so subspaces. Okay, so this is, a, I believe that this is a, a typical example of, so without wall singularity. So the next theorem concerns the regularity theorem or dimension two singularity. So for every n, so and also for all sufficiently small delta, so let x be a purely n-dimensional GCBA space, then the following are equivalent. So the first one is n delta wall set is empty, namely without wall singularity, x has x has no wall singularity. So the, the second and third one is about the uh, n delta singular set has dimension is at most n minus two. So in the sense of topological dimension and also the house of dimension. The fourth and fifth one concerns the topological singular set. So these topological singular set has dimension at most n minus two. So this is so-called uh, regularity theorem of co-dimension two singularity. Moreover, in this case, so W n delta x and also S n delta x can be replaced by so W n x and S n x respectively. So as future challenges, uh, actually this is originally suggested by Alexander Lichak. So examine, so to study the topological structure of such spaces without n wall singularity or equivalently satisfying this condition. So uh, as, a as, a class, as a class, much wider than a class of CBA homology manifold. So sketch of the proof of uh, regularity theorem of co-dimension two. So this is a source. These are simply simple implications. So just, uh, so this from five to four and one. So assume now five, fifth condition, means that the house of dimension of the topological singular set is at most n minus two. Then the, of course, by the definition of the dimension, we get fourth condition. This, uh, so, uh, uh, so generally, so dimension is at most yeah, the house of the dimension. So we get uh, fourth condition. And also we get the first condition, namely W n delta X is empty. Indeed, if not, then by our relaxed wall singularity theorem three, so there exists an open subset U0, we can find a wall neighbor A X0. So N minus one is equal to the dimension of a topological singularity. And also this is at most, so topological singularity of the whole set. So we get these implications and also these implications is rather simple. So first assume first condition, WN delta is empty. Then we get the third condition. So the household dimension SN delta is at most N minus two. So in fact, so if WN delta is empty, then SN delta and SN minus one delta coincide with each other. So, and also by definition, SN minus one delta is contained in SN minus one. So we have, so dimension, house of dimension of SN delta is equal to house of dimension of SN minus one delta. Okay, is bounded above by the house of dimension of SN minus one. But this house of dimension is at most N minus one, N minus two. So whether this does inequality follows from the works of Richard and myself. So then we get 
fifth condition. So house of dimension of the topo topological singularity is at most n minus two, because the topological singular set is contained in SN delta X. So just consider the complement. So RN delta X is a Lipschitz micro. So, okay, we can also prove the other implications. So this is a sketch of proof of regularity theorem or the of co-dimension two. So, uh, so our regularity of co-dimension two inherits an infin infinitesimal property. This is a nice, so nice information. So let X be a purely n-dimensional GCBA, then the following are equivalent. So the topological singular set of X is at most n minus two. The second one is about the tangent cone. The third one is about the space of direction. Okay, the theorem, uh, so theorem five, so makes us, make us so enables us to, so to do a inductive argument for our GCBA spaces. So just theorem five follows from theorem four, just, so the last regularity of co-dimension two and the following basic observation. So if we have a sequence of purely n-dimensional GCBA spaces converging to XP in the pointed groom of house of topology, then if each XI is purely n-dimensional, then so is X. And also if each WNXI is empty, then so is WNX. So applying this proposition to the blow up for each point and combining so theorem five and the proposition, we get the, the theorem five. Okay. So in the rest of my talk, so I would like to so discuss some simple applications of this study. So first one concerns sphere theorems or cat one spaces. So Lichak and myself prove the so-called capacity sphere theorem. If a compact geodesically complete cat one space Z admits no triple of points with pairwise distance pi. So in other words, so the pack three of Z is smaller than pi over two. So in the sense of Grove and Markov sense, so with him. So then Z is homeomorphic to SM for some M. The second one is actually a corollary of cap capacity sphere theorem. So as a volume sphere theorem, so if a purely M dimensional compact geodesically complete cat one space Z satisfies the following. So the M dimensional House of volume, house of measure of Z is smaller than three over two times sphere, then Z is homeomorphic to SM. So in volume sphere theorem, we need the pureness on the dimension. So since so consider some SM here, we need sphere and also just one point union take S1 like this. This also, yeah, so if we, if, if we so measure such good spaces, so the volume is the same as unit sphere. So we need the condition of purely M dimensional. Well, so this is a critical case. So the spherical join S minus one and T30 is purely M dimensional, compact, geodesically complete cat one space, satisfying the volume ratio here is equal to two, three over two. Because so the spherical join of SM minus one and three point spaces consists of so three closed hemispheres, just um, along here along the equator, 
grew together, we get the spherical joint. So this is a critical example, so not to be a sphere. So now I, I want to remark that if Z is so purely M-dimensional, compact, geodesically complete, cat one space, then the household volume of Z is at least the household volume of the sphere. So the equality holds if and only if Z is isometric to SM. And also if the volume of Z is sufficiently close to the sphere, then Z is by Lipschitz homeomorphic to the sphere. Okay, so this is a new volume sphere theorem. So for every M, there exists delta. So satisfying the following property, if a purely M-dimensional compact geodesically complete cat one space Z, so with topological singularity of dimension at most M minus two, satisfies the following volume condition. So household volume of Z is smaller than three over two times sphere plus delta. Then that is homeomorphic to SM. So uh, actually, so this theorem six for cat one homology M manifolds was recently proved myself. And also this is a new version. So why? So because this critical example, of course, is not homology manifold at this good point. And also this has topological singularity of dimension, just n minus one. Ah, sorry, m minus one, yes. So, so one can relax the volume condition of such reasons. So, so I would like to pose some volume pinching problems for cat one homology manifolds. So for m uh, at least two, let Rm be Rm be the supremum of R such that if a compact cat one homology M manifold that satisfies the so whose volume ratio between SM and Z is at most R, then Z must be homeomorphic to SM. Consider the such Rm. So the problem is to find the concrete value Rm. Moreover, describe all compact cat one homology M manifold Z satisfying so as a critical case. So oh, this problem is, I think, open for smooth Riemannian case. So even M is equal to two. So uh, for me, at least for me, this seems to be interesting. So in the smooth Riemannian case also. So, okay, this is the final slide on my talk. So, theorem seven concerns asymptotic topological irregularity of cathode spaces. So for every n, the exists delta satisfies the following property. So if a purely n-dimensional proper geodesically complete cathode space X, so whose topological singularity has dimension at most n minus two. So, and the volume ratio also, okay, volume growth of X. This means volume growth, Euclidean volume growth of X is smaller than three over two plus delta. Then X should be homeomorphic to RM. Okay, this theorem is also for cat zero homology N manifolds was proved recently by myself. So I finally remark the Gromov's question, whether cat zero manifolds are Euclidean. So actually, so Gromov's original question about so Boozeman non-positive curvatures 
Zeeman space is open non positive curvature. But in the cat zero setting, Gromov's question. So whether cat zero manifolds are Euclidean. So every cat zero homology and manifold, the dimension is at most three, is homeomorphic to RN. Uh, this uh, follows from the classical geometric topology. So recently, Lichak and uh, Alexander Lichak and Stefan Stadler and myself, every cat zero topological four manifold is homeomorphic to R4. So on the other hand, by Davis and Yaniskevitz in 1991, for each N at most five, there exists a cat zero topological N manifold, but not homeomorphic to R. Okay, so I stop here my talk. Thank you very much for your attention.